so the last topic the informational context of business three uh we're looking at forecasting so forecasting um under that we have uh, there are four components which we have to uh, look into that is uh, over a period of time the trend what is the general trend then the seasonal component because of the fluctuations uh, during the um, year what are the seasons is based on that what are the fluctuations that has to be taken into consideration we have the cyclical component because of the trade cycles in the economy what changes do happen and then the uh, residual component because of no reason that there is a fluctuation so um, randomly there is some change in that um, so that is r so if we if we are to um, find out the uh, value or the future value the forecasted value according to the additive model we have it as y is equal to um, all four of them all four components trend plus uh, seasonal component plus the cyclical components plus the residual component multiplicative model takes into consideration all the four components as a product but uh, see um, we see that if if the data is r is inherently unknown unknowable and so is generally omitted so r is not considered so we are left with trend uh, seasonal component and uh, cyclical component but then again if it is an annual data omit s as well because uh, we are considering one full year as one unit therefore omit the seasonal fluctuation so additive model says t plus c or multiplicative model says t into c but then again if we are taking a small period of time we take it as uh, cyclical trend, cyclical components are not taken the trend and the seasonal uh, component would be taken so trend plus s or trend into s so um then again what is trend so trend uh, basically talks about for both models the first step is to forecast the trend so how do we estimate the trend regression equation uh, substitute the appropriate time into the regression equation the resulting value of t is the forecast trend we know the regression equation y is equal to a plus bx so in case of uh, uh, the forecast uh, wherever it is the time period substitute the time period into uh, in x bx so x would be the time period so take that and then estimate what is the trend okay then we also have moving average trend wherein the averages are moved um, into future based on uh, the time period overall forecast multiplicative model is trend into seasonal component or additive model trend plus seasonal component so then there are examples given here let's just look into this one if it is a moving average um, moving average trend for data with an even cycle that is um, quarterly if there are um, the time period is taken for four years so in that case see the trend the average value would be calculated as take the first values find out the average okay after finding out the average we would place it between the second and third then it it moves to the um, then it would be placed between so 1 2 3 4 so in between this so likewise we keep on working out and then find out the moving average but the exam kit questions has no um, bit on um, moving average question so i don't know whether it would be tested in the exam or not um, but otherwise this is how we proceed further because the time period moves to the next period a four year four quarter trend is taken into consideration so Uh, we have the values calculated 174 would be 42 plus 41 plus 52 plus 39 but because it is an even period it would be placed anywhere in between second and third okay likewise so then um, 
after finding it out then again it has to be associated with the um, with a particular uh, year so between now this is between two uh, two and three the next one is between um, three and four so find out the average of these two and in between of that would exactly come till the third year so that's how moving trend is calculated so here it should be divided by four already and this is plus divided by two so altogether one state go they have divided by eight that's how moving average is calculated otherwise we can also find it out average value 42 41 52 39 174 divided by 4 find out and 177 divided by 5, 4 find out so since it is already divided by 4 now when we find out the average of these two it will it, it will only be divided by 2 okay so that's how the moving averages are calculated but uh, i didn't see any question based on moving averages Now the seasonal component, seasonal component if it is multiplicative model, S will become Y by T. Okay, the trend. And the additive model it's given here. So what would we be doing that is uh, um, see in case of uh, we are learning this as part of um, the forecasting technique so in case of forecasting technique how can uh, the future be forecasted um, can be done by way of taking y is equal to these uh, factors so the overall y represents the actual value or the forecast value if a prediction is being made so y will be either it is the forecast or the calculated value or uh, if the these components exist so whatever are those four components or uh, limited to two two components whatever it is the y represents either maybe it is already given as the actual value or uh, by uh, making the adjustments of the trend and the comp uh, cyclical component or the seasonal component it is calculated value so it, it could be uh, in the situation it could be the actual value or uh, in the situation it were it would uh, it is representing the forecasted value either ways okay so that's why <clears throat> there is an adjustment uh, there is an uh, example given here a company reports sales of 50000 for January, if the seasonal component is minus 27%, that's multiplicative model, find the seasonal adjusted sales. So if the if this particular seasonal component adjustment is made, what would be the um, ad seasonally adjusted sales? So the seasonally adjusted sales would be. Now, if it is multiplicative model is minus 27%. So then in that case, the seasonal component is um, given up as a percentage up or down. So because it is going down, out of 100, it is minus 27% is deducted 73%. Now, these are the active sales which are reported. But because the trend or the, uh, the uh, change on account of seasonal component is a minus 27%, so ultimately we only have 73 percent of that fine see now if it is only 73 percent we when we adjust the uh, seasonally adjusted sales s is equal to 
S is equal to, we see that um, the trend, okay, um, no, S comes here, Y, the uh, actual sales or the forecasted sales divided by the trend. So S goes here, so we will have it as seasonally adjusted sales will become the actual uh, sales which are given as 50,000 here divided by what is the trend? The trend says that the fluctuation is on account of um, minus 27 percent. So we just have it as 50,000 divided by 0 0.73. This is the value. Okay, let's, um, on this note, we see that uh, the question, uh, yesterday I have stopped the uh, questions on that note. So let's take it up from there. Um, question number 194 says that actual number of uh, unemployment is equal to uh, 2,200. See, it says that the underlying trend at this point is 2,000 people. Okay. The seasonal factor is 0 0.97. Now, if that is the case, we we are asked to find out what's the seasonally adjusted figure. So seasonally adjusted figure, the, um, the equation is y is equal to uh, t into s. Now, the if we are to adjust that, adjust the, um, the, the seasonal factor of 0 0.97, then what is the seasonally adjusted factor? But otherwise, they are looking at it as 2000. The trend of uh, uh, unemployment of people is 2000. That is how it is look, looked at. But we are asked to make the adjustment of 0 0.97 seasonal factor and then uh, arrive at the value. Right. So T is equal to take the actual uh, actual unemployment number, which is 2200, divided by the seasonal factor, which is 0 0.97. So the formula says it is 2200 divided by 0 0.97. So we have arrived at 2268. But they are uh, looking at the trend to be as 2000. But when we make the adjustment of the seasonal factor and calculate it, it stands around 2,268.041. So that is um, option D. On a similar note is 195 question also. It talks about on a similar note. If takings at Mr. Lee's take away for the first quarter of 2015 were uh, 25,000. So the actual, um, so this is actual takings, takeaways. Actual takeaways for 2015 are 25,000. The underlying trend at this point, underlying trend, is um, 23,000. Seasonal factor for the trend is given to be as 0.78. So why is the forecasted value is equal to the trend into the seasonal factor. So we are to find out the seasonal factor is already given. See, the actual uh, takeaways are 25,000. So if we uh, take into the uh, consideration these two things, so we have the calculated value as 32,051. One ninety six says in a time series analysis, the multiplicative model is used to forecast sales and the following seasonal variations apply. Um, so we see two zero one zero onwards till two zero one five is given. It has been decided to rebase the index so that two zero one three is equal to hundred. The index for two zero one five will now be nearest to which which of the following? So if we are to uh, change that, see retrospective. So 196, until now the base is 2010, now the base is moved to 2013. So base year, base year now is 2013. So 2013 has a value of 127. 
127 is always, I mean, the base year is always taken at 100%. Now we have to find out what is the value for 2015. So 2015 value is 152. Okay. So that is what, um, so that is what, is what we have to calculate. So here we would have it as, Okay, so 119.7, this is the answer. Just cross multiplication and then you would arrive at the answer. Over, over an 18 month period, sales of Parrot's best selling product have been found to have an underlying linear trend of y is equal to 7.112 plus 3.949x, where y is the number of items sold and x, x represents the uh, month. Monthly deviation from trend have been calculated, and month 19 is expected to be 1.12 times the trend value. What is the forecast number of items to be sold in month 19? What is the forecast number of items to be sold in month 19? Okay. Um, the equation uh, underlying linear trend of y is equal to 7.112 plus 3.949 into x. So now, um, where y is the number of items sold and x represents the month. See the variable x here in this equation, it represents the month. Monthly deviations from trend have been calculated and month 19 is expected to be 1.12. So basically, if there is a trend, that trend is 1.12 times the trend value. Now, we see the... Uh, equation has 7.112 which is constant, 3.949 also is constant, but uh, the uh, uh, depending on the number, number of the month, the variation also, um, the deviation also takes place, uh, the deviation in the trend also takes place. So what do we do now? So here the equation y is equal to 7.112 is constant plus we now have to substitute in 3.949 into x represents the month and that is given as 19 and we also see that there is a trend of 1.12 that that uh, gets affected so this variable component gets affected to that extent so we will have to do this one the calculation if we look into that, the answer is 7.112 plus uh, 3.949 into the um, month 19 into the variation of 1.12. So that's the answer, which is 91.14672. So closest to that is um, 92. So we go with 92. One ninety eight says in data with a four year cycle, the cyclical components using the additive model are given to be we have year one to year four, um, ten, fifty, twenty five, two twenty. Two zero one five is taken to be as year one. So if we have um, the values given. If this is 190, if this is 198, see year one, if it is taken to be as 2015, then we have year two, then we have year three, then we have year four, okay? So 2015, 
so we are asked to predict it for 2019 so the prediction should happen for 2019 which is the next year okay and if 2015 is year one of the cycle if, uh, and if the trend for 2019 is predicted to be 70 what is the predicted actual value for 2019 and this is additive model now if it is additive model y is equal to we have it as the um, now this is cyclical fluctuation so in 2015 um, of um, of the cycle and if the trend for 2019 so um, the trend is given to us as 70 okay there are no seasonal fluctuations but these are each year is considered to be as a cycle so cyclical fluctuations plus the trend so additive model according to additive model we will have it as y is equal to okay so then in that case um um the trend part of it is 70 and the base year here we have it as uh, 2015 so in that case if if we are to uh, find out that take the base year's value then um, the trend is 70 so this would be 80 we have that y is equal to 80 says Our ninety-nine says H is forecasting its sales for next year using a combination of time series and regression analysis model. An analysis of past sales units has produced the following equation for the quarterly sales trends. Trend y is equal to twenty-six x plus eight eight five zero. So a plus b x. Wherever x is there, that will represent the time period. Where the value of X represents the quarterly accounting period, and the value of Y represents the quarterly sales trend in units. So, quarter one is equal to next year. We'll have a value for X of twenty-five. Okay. Um, the same way the way we have done uh, um, in the previous question, quarter one, then uh, quarter two, quarter. And um, quarter four. These are for the first year. So this would be uh, year one. But the question is addressing about year two. Year two quarter one. Okay. <clears throat> um the quarterly seasonal variations have been measured uh, using the multiplicative model um the quarter one of next year will have a value for x of 25 okay um then um if it is, if if this one has a value of 25 then this will have 26 then this will have 27 and uh, Four will have twenty eight. So I think everything is for the next year only. There is no. Um, so it, it basically is focusing on uh, the next year. Next year values. Uh, the next year quarter one has twenty five as the um, value for x. So x is the time period. The time period is denoted by a value called as twenty five. So the so x. Uh, Quarter two for x uh, value is twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. So now 
that is one part of it then apart from that the quarterly seasonal variations have been measured using the multiplicative model proportional model and r so we also have to adjust the trend see wherever it is decreasing so this part will the seasonal variation will be um, 100 minus 15% or 100 minus 5% then plus 5% plus 15% so those adjustments also have to be made for each of the quarters the seasonal variations whatever are taking place now production is planned to occur at a constant rate throughout the year the company does not hold inventories at the end of any year the difference between the budgeted sales for quarter 1 and quarter 4 next year are so what have we to do we have to find out what are the budgeted sales for all the uh, because it is basically asking us to find out about uh, um the difference between quarter 4 and quarter 1 we can as well also continue with the um quarter 1 and uh, quarter 4 because it's basically the difference between these two okay so sales trend since the um, analysis of the past sales units so this is this is in terms of units what's the equation the equation says y is equal to 8850 plus 26x okay So here it would be is equal to eight thousand eight fifty plus twenty six into uh, the value is twenty five for this one, and uh, here it will be eight thousand eight fifty plus twenty six into twenty eight. then again we see that uh, the quarterly seasonal variations have been measured um, using the multiplicative model so um, see the trend is um, the trend for each of the quarters uh, we have calculated but that is again subject to some amount of fluctuations are also there so let's also take into account the uh, fluctuations so i think here itself we will write about the fluctuations so fluctuations would be 100% minus 15% then we have it as um, and the here it would be 100% plus Fifteen percent. Uh, okay, these fluctuations also have to be incorporated into sales trend. Okay, the so adjusted um, uh, value would be the sales trend would be here is equal to now the difference would be the round it up it is 2940 
we see the overhead cost of rp have been found to be accurately represented by the formula y is equal to 10000 plus 0.25 x where y is the monthly cost and x represents the activity level measured as the number of orders monthly activity levels of orders may be estimated using a combined regression analysis and time series model a is equal to 100000 plus 30b where a represents the deseasonalized monthly activity level that is the trend and b represents the um, month number in month 240 the seasonal index value is 108 the overhead cost per um, rp for the month 240 is dash okay we are to find out what is um, overhead cost which is represented by y is equal to 10000 plus 0.25x but then again we also have to find out what's the value of x x represents the activity level the activity level is given by a variable called as a a is equal to a 100000 plus 30b now b here represents the month number month number is 240 first substitute that and then uh, after we find out what is the variable a then substitute in the variable y to find out what is the overhead cost question number 200 overhead cost It's given by an equation y is equal to ten thousand plus zero point two five x. After that, we have um, x represents the number of um, x represents the activity level, and the activity level. Um, Now they are given by an equation. A is equal to one hundred thousand plus thirty thirty B. Okay. Uh, first let's solve A. So B represents the month number. Month number is two hundred and forty. So. But then there there is also an adjustment here. Seasonal adjustment is given to us, uh, which says that the seasonal index value is one one hundred and eight. One hundred and eight percentage is in terms of number, it is one point zero eight or into one hundred and eight percent. So um, let's find out what is the value of a. Um, we would have it as a is equal to one hundred thousand plus. Thirty into B is two hundred and forty. Then there is an adjustment for the seasonal index value of one zero eight. So we write it as one zero eight percentage or one point zero eight either way. So let's check this one.
then let's find out what's the overhead cost overhead cost by is equal to here it would be 10000 plus 0.25 we got the value of um, The seasonal index value, the entire um, index is impacting. He A represents so the uh, percentage of one not eight is applicable for the entire activity. It is just not the variable component. It is just not for the trend because A is the A represents the deseasonalized monthly activity. So the entire activity has to be multiplied into one zero eight percent. That is a mistake which I have made. um so let's put this one as a uh, so here it would be uh, we have 108 uh, applicable for the entire Okay, now uh, overhead cost by is equal ten thousand plus one zero zero point two five into one one five seven seventy six. So is equal to ten thousand plus zero point two five into one one five. Seven seven. Okay, so it is nearest thousand will be, or it would be thirty nine thousand. Question number two zero one. Monthly sales of product. Uh, R follow a linear trend of y is equal to nine point seven two plus five point eight one six x. Where y is the number of units sold and x is the number of the month. Monthly deviation from the trend follow an additive model. The forecast number of units of product are to be sold in month twenty three. So x we have to take it to be as twenty three, which has a seasonal factor of plus six point five. So first let's adjust what is y, and the seasonal uh, factor um, 
of 6.5 has to be added because this is an additive model. So let's just uh, first find out the forecasted number of units. The linear trend, um, trend is given to us as, trend is given as y is equal to 9.72 plus 5.816 x. x represents the month. Month number is given as 23. So we will have it as y is equal to So we have 9.23. Um, um, we have this. Then, uh, because it is additive model, we have um, the forecasted value, uh, the trend adjusted according to the number 23, plus we also have to add the seasonal factor. Okay, so forecasted It is 143.488 um, plus we have the 6.5. So uh, round it off to the nearest whole unit, it is 150. Then 202. 202 says ZPLC has found that it can estimate future sales using time series uh, analysis and regression techniques. The following trend equation has been derived by is equal to 25,000 plus 6,500 X, where um, X is um, where Y is the total sales unit per quarter, X is the time period reference number. So for four quarters are given. Uh, we are asked to use using a multiplicative model. So the numbers are given. Seasonal index values are 70, 90, 150, and 90. Assuming that the first quarter of year one is time period with the reference number one, the forecast for sales unit for the third quarter of year seven is um, what units? So it is uh, quite a lengthy um, time period. Uh, year seven, year seven, quarter three, until that um, the number has to be estimated. So let's just put it and then um, drag it and then check that. Maybe I will do the calculation to a site. So year starting from year one. Then we have quarter one. We need to come till year uh, seven. So we want till year uh, year seven quarter three. So if here it is one two, uh, just drag it down till year three. So year seven quarter three. The value is the number uh, is twenty seven. So we got it as twenty seven here. 
Okay, what's the equation? The equation says um, y is equal to 25,000. The trend equation is given as y is equal to 25,000 plus 6,500x. Okay. X is the time period. We already got the time period as 27. X can be 27. But then, uh, um, assuming the first quarter of year one uh, are these figures. So let's just uh, substitute the values. Okay, what about the seasonal variation? So seasonal variation, um, so this is a multiplicative model. We, we now have calculated what's the trend factor. The seasonal variation has to be now calculated, but uh, we are calculating for year seven quarter six, but the details that are given is Z has also derived the following set of seasonal variation index values for each quarter. So every year for each quarter, the seasonal variations would be in the same manner. We are right now specifically looking at the quarter three. So whether it is year one or year two or year three or th year seven, quarter three will have, uh, because these are uh, seasonal fluctuations. So every year the same uh, seasonal fluctuation is what would be observed. So the seasonal fluctuation stands at 150. So this is a multiplicative model. Now, in that case, we need to now adjust that and then um, calculate what is the um, forecast per sales unit. forecast per sales units for the third quarter of year seven done so the um, trend is calculated as 200 and um, um, 200,500 200,500. The fluctuations are into 150 percentage. So here we would have it as 200,500 into 150 percentage. So it is 300,750 units. So that's it. That's the last question in the exam kit. Um, So this is question number 202, which is the last question, okay?
uh, i will upload all the recordings uh, in the lms someday i'll find it and then i will also inform sugandhini about uh, we finishing the content and uh, the classes are done okay is kavya yes ma'am um, i right now i will inform sugandhini Um, okay so you are you finished the syllabus for the other papers as well 